Hi, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be showing you how to connect your Vitals Bridge 300 mainstream unit to a Core Pulse patient monitor. Before starting this video, I downloaded the Vitals Bridge connector software to my laptop. I downloaded it from vitalsbridge.com downloads. I also connected my Vitals Bridge unit to my laptop via a USB cable. If you're following along, you're welcome to connect your Vitals Bridge via a USB cable, which is plugged in right here or an ethernet cable, which is plugged in right here. And both of those cables will be plugged in directly to your laptop. You can also use Bluetooth. Bluetooth is configured with your laptop the same way any Bluetooth device would be configured. You can also use a mobile device, an Android mobile device, or a tablet to connect to your Vitals Bridge. In order to do that, you're going to need to go to the Google Play Store and download the Vitals Bridge connector app. And you're gonna to need to connect your Vitals Bridge to your electronic device via Bluetooth. Throughout this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a variety of vital signs cables from your patient monitor to your vitals bridge. I already have vital signs running on my patient monitor, which will allow us to check and make sure everything is going well along the way and that all of the vital signs are working properly. Also, since we will be connecting to a capnography system on our core pulse patient monitor system, I've connected a carbon dioxide supply to my unit. I am using the carbon dioxide supply that comes with the Vitals Bridge. It's just a small carbon dioxide canister and pressure regulator. And I've connected that to the little tube that says CO2 in. I've also adjusted the pressure of my regulator to be between 15 and 20 PSI. You're welcome to connect any carbon dioxide source that you have, a wall tank or whatever it may be, but just make sure you talk with your facilities manager before you connect it so that everything has the correct pressures. All right, let's begin. Since we already started talking about carbon dioxide, let's connect that cable first. This particular Corpulse monitor is a mainstream capnography unit. And this Vitals Bridge has been configured to work with mainstream. If you want to use a side stream unit, Contact support at vitalsbridge.com to learn how you can configure your unit to work with SideStream. The cable that comes with the Core Pulse Patient Monitor to use for capnography looks like this. You've got one end that connects to the patient monitor and you've got another end with two boxes that have triangles on one side. Take the end that connects to the patient monitor and plug it in where it says CO2 on your patient monitor. Once you have that plugged in, we're gonna set this aside for just a minute. We're then gonna take the CO2 adapter that comes from, comes with your Vitals Bridge, and on it you've got triangles on one side and no triangles on the other side. So you're gonna take each of these two little boxes from this cable, and the sides that have the triangles are gonna be on the same side that have the triangles here. Once you plug those in, they should snap into place, just like that. Then take this end of that adapter and plug it into the little box that says CO2 out. Once it's screwed in tight, if you have carbon dioxide on, you should shortly begin to see a CO2 waveform. If you're not seeing a CO2 waveform, it's likely that you have your patient monitor set to show an SpO2 waveform. That's really easy to fix. You just come down to this section, select it, and then change it to show CO2. Once it shows CO2, then you should begin to see those nice, good breaths. You, if your CO2 waves are too high or too low to what you would expect from where you have connected from what you've put into your Vitals Bridge connector software, that's really easy to fix. You can just come to the configuration tab in your software and perform a calibration. Instructions about how to perform those calibrations can be found on vitalsbridge.com. All right, let's start the next connection. We're going to connect SPO2 next. The SPO2 cable for your patient monitor should look like this. You've got a probe on one end and something to plug into your monitor on the other. It's going to plug in to your patient monitor right where it says oximetry. Once you have that plugged in, I like to put it on my own finger and test and make sure that your SpO2 probe is actually working. If it's working, you should see an SpO2 reading in this box. A 
And there we go, we've got our SpO2 reading. You can also change this waveform back so that you can see the SpO2 waveform. And there it is. Okay, so we'll set that down for just a minute and I'm gonna pull out my oximeter adapter that came with my vitals bridge. And this is a small gray box and a cable that has two matching ports on either end. We're gonna take one of these ports and plug it in to our adapter box where it says SPO2 port vitals bridge. Once we plug that in, we're gonna take the other end and we're gonna plug it in to the spot on the vitals bridge where it says SPO2. After that's all been plugged in, we're gonna take our probe and we're gonna slip it onto our adapter box right where this white finger is. It'll take just a minute, but then we should see those waveforms and the SPO2 reading. There we go, we've got a perfect SPO2 reading and a nice waveform. Now, if your SPO2 reading here is not matching what you have set as your SPO2 level in your Vitals Bridge Connector software, just like with the CO2, you can perform a calibration in the Configuration tab. And again, instructions on how to perform those calibrations can be found on vitalsbridge.com. Right, let's move this out of the way and we'll do our next connection. Okay, so for the next connection, we're going to connect our non-invasive blood pressure. Your non-invasive blood pressure cable should look like this. You've got one end that plugs into your patient monitor and one end that plugs into a blood pressure cuff. We'll plug the end that goes into our patient monitor right here. And once that's snapped into place, we're gonna work on this end. So, the connection from the vitals bridge to the non-invasive blood pressure tube is different than what you would see for a blood pressure cuff. So with your vitals bridge, you should have received something that looks like this, this non-invasive blood pressure kit. And within this kit, there's various tubes and fittings so that you can prepare a personalized adapter that will connect from your non-invasive blood pressure tube directly to your vitals bridge. I've already have one made here. This end came pre-attached to the small piece of tube and then I found the one that fit my non-invasive blood pressure tube and I connected it to the other end. We'll snap that into place and then you're going to connect this cable right here where it says not NBP, non-invasive blood pressure. Once that's connected in there, move this out of the way. We can take a non-invasive blood pressure reading by pushing NIBP and start. We'll close this window for a minute while it runs that non-invasive blood pressure reading and you should hear clicks from your vitals bridge as it takes that reading. If you don't get a reading after your first measurement or if your reading isn't exactly what you have put in your vitals bridge, then it's not a big deal. Just rerun the non-invasive blood pressure reading and it should, it should get to where it's supposed to be. All right, next we're going to connect our temperature cables. The Vitals Bridge 300 supports two different temperature measurements and your Vitals Bridge should come with a temperature cable that looks like this. We've got one end that's gonna connect directly into the Vitals Bridge and one end that's gonna connect into the patient monitor. So we'll take our patient monitor and right here where it says temperature one, we're gonna plug in our first cable and then we're gonna take this end and plug it into the spot that says T1. We'll do the same thing with a second cable where it says temperature two. And then T2. Now the default screen for the core pulse patient monitor doesn't show temperatures, but that's really easy to fix. Same way that we fix the SpO2 waveform. So we'll come down here to whichever vital sign we don't wanna see, and we'll change that to show whichever temperature we would like. I'll set it to show temperature one. There we go. 
The last thing we're going to connect is our ECG. Since the Vitals Bridge is manufactured in the United States, the coloring system on our ECG buttons matches the coloring system used for ECG cables in the United States. But the Core Pulse Patient Monitor is not manufactured in the United States, so the colors are not going to match. So I'll tell you where to connect each of these cables, but if you would like to know how different coloring systems match across countries, there are several, there are several different tables that you can find online. Your ECG cable is going to look like this. You've got one end that plugs into the patient monitor and one end that has all of the different ECG clips on it. We'll take the end that plugs into the patient monitor and we'll plug it in right where it says ECG. Once that's plugged in, we can connect each of these clips onto the buttons on our vitals bridge. We're gonna connect the red one to the button that says RA. We're gonna connect the black one to the button that says B. We're gonna connect the green one to the one that says LL. And we're going to connect the yellow one to the one that says LA. Once you have all of those connected, you should see an ECG form on your monitor. If the ECG form looks fuzzy, you can always add a filter to make it look smooth. And the heart rate that we receive from our ECG should be the same as the heart rate that you have in your patient monitor. If you want to check, make sure everything is going through, you can hop onto your patient monitor, your vitals bridge, pick a different waveform to set it to. I picked ASTOL. And we'll see it goes flatline, which is exactly what it's supposed to be doing. We can go back to our normal ECG waveform. The Vitals Bridge 300 also supports invasive blood pressures on some patient monitors. Unfortunately, the Corpus patient monitor is not supported with invasive blood pressure readings. So you cannot connect invasive blood pressure readings from your Vitals Bridge to your corporal patient monitor. The last thing I'm going to show you how to do is to connect a simulator to your vitals bridge so that you can run your vitals bridge and vital signs from a simulator so that it shows on your patient monitor. You'll come here to the simulator tab in your vitals bridge, connect your software, and any simulation that you currently have running will be shown here. I have one, a virtual one running on my laptop. I'll click connect. And you know it's connected successfully when you see all of these different vital signs appear here. If you come into the simulation tab then, you can control all the vital signs directly from this window. Make sure before you worry too much about things not appearing on your patient monitor, in order for the simulation software to know that you've connected the vitals bridge, you need to make sure each of these boxes at the bottom are checked. I already have the carbon dioxide, the invasive blood pressure, the SpO2 and the ECG clicked, but I don't have the temperatures. So I'll click those and we should see the temperatures update here to what they're supposed to be. And then you can control your software from the simulator or you can go back to the manual tab in the Vitals Bridge Connect in the Vitals Bridge Connector app.